this is one of my favorite roads in the world. It's the 395 in California, which is splitting the Sierra Mountains on that side and Death Valley on this side. I'm alone. I've been trying to schedule a uh, camping, multi-day camping trip with my friends. Every time we set a date for one reason or another, they have a scheduling conflict and I figured this whole summer was gonna slip by. There's a certain um, loneliness when you're by yourself, but loneliness isn't necessarily a bad thing. If you want to lead an adventurous life, you have to be prepared to do things on your own. Backpacking, that means you'll meet people, you'll be more prone to meet people actually, because you'll, you'll need to reach out to satisfy your social needs. And if you're going into the mountains, it's a more lonely affair, but also a time for introspection and a real trust in yourself and self-reliance that you can get in and out of this rugged terrain alive. The big moment, I left the car behind. I believe I'm properly geared up and it is off Death Valley behind me and the Sierra's in front. Well, I kind of was a little cold last night. This tent has a, a vent around it, which is cool but it lets in a lot of air. I'll put all my shit inside the sleeping bag and that creates less dead space and makes it warmer. Let's go find our food. Always stash the food in a bear box and then put it away from the camp. So if the bear finds it, it doesn't necessarily find you. All right, I'm officially off trail now, and I'm looking for a way to get in there through all this bush. Okay, I made it through the bush because some cool people who did this before me left these cairns, just basically rock piles. It's real comforting when you are uncertain if anyone's gone the way you've gone before, if you're doing something stupid, and then you see one of these cairns. It, uh, it's a big relief. So a nice thing you can do as a hiker is if you, if you see one, reinforce it, add another rock to it. So the person that comes after you will, will, will spot the route and they'll stay on the route that other people have tested and it worked. Lost any signs of a cairn or marker so i'm just going straight up this rock flow following the water Whoa! see mount tom in the distance there i'm uh tried to traverse this lake on the north side, which was a mistake. I got my uh, north and south mixed up. Now I'm on the south side and that is my route. Usually you hear filter your water when you're in the outdoors, generally a good idea. But when you're so high up that you can see the glacier, and follow the stream down to where you are, you'd have to be really unlucky for a marmot to have shat between there and here. So I say just go ahead and drink it. It's the best water you'll ever have. Mm.
made it to the highest Horton Lake. I'm gonna set my tent up down yonder, and tomorrow I will ascend that chute. When you set up your tent, always hitch your little bags, your tent bag and your spike bag, always hitch them to the tent so they don't blow away and easy to find them in the morning. Oh, it was cold again last night. I broke out my emergency blanket. It's no miracle cure, it's like a big piece of tin foil. Yeah, yeah. I've left my beautiful lake camp behind a little late. I futzed around a bit, breaking down camp. Late is not necessarily good because I have to ascend this rock chute. And as the day grows hotter, the snow between rocks melts, the rocks expand. And there's a reason why all these rocks are right where I'm standing. Made it through the hardest part of the climb. No rocks fell on my head. Passed some beautiful wildflowers. And now I've stopped for lunch. Here's a little tip. A rock barrier for your stove. If you're, if you're cooking in windy conditions, you'll use less fuel and your food will cook faster. Spaghetti with salmon. Mm. <laughs> One of the most gratifying feelings in life when you get to a mountain pass and a whole new landscape opens up to you. Lakes, mountains, glaciers, valleys. What a treat. I lollygagged a lot today and I got a late start. So the idea of climbing uh, Humphreys is the most exciting. I, I calculated the distance there and then I calculated the distance that I'd come so far and how long it took me. And there's no way, there's no way I'd be able to climb it. And also this is important to then make it down to some suitable shelter spot before dark. You don't want to get caught out in the high altitude at dark. So now I'm going to head to a mountain called Four Gables. Uh, I might not have enough time for that either. I've given myself two hours to summit it. If not, I'm going to drop down to one of these lakes on the other side. I told myself I'd get to the top of this mountain within 10 minutes from now, but it would take at least an hour. Here is where you, where I respect my word, I honor my word, and I turn around. So I'm gonna head down to the lakes and perhaps another day, maybe on the way out, I'll climb this mountain. I figured out part of the reason why I was cold, this air mattress, fill it up with hot air from your lungs, but then you set it down on the cool earth and the air compresses. So before you are ready to go to sleep, you gotta give it a couple more puffs to get it firm and keep all the parts of your body off the ground. All right, I broke camp super fast. I'm leaving Steelhead and this whole basin behind. It's, ah, it's mosquito Armageddon down here. So I'm gonna go back, uh, back to try to climb Four Gables. Ah, damn it. Mother...
You. Well, I made it. This is the end of my adventure, as long as I make it back down safely. Thanks for following along. If you got some use out of this, and you'd like me to keep making them, please subscribe to my channel, like the video, leave a comment if you have any questions and I'll answer them. This entire route I took, I'm posting in the notes and on my blog. I made a couple mistakes, which I'll, I'll make notes about so you don't make the same ones. Now I will conclude with a little summit tradition. Thank you for watching, I'm Jonathan Legg.